Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember, check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med surge mastery courses. Plus 11 other courses like fundamentals, pediatrics, maternity, mental health, and more. Complete with over 300 follow along cheat sheets and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. All right, guys, let's begin. Of immunosuppressants given to help the body stop attacking itself, like with clients in autoimmune diseases, where the body's own immune system is attacking normal organs. And immunosuppressants are also given with patients with organ transplant, so the body doesn't reject that new organ. Now, let the name help you here. Immunosuppressants are given to suppress that immune system, like putting those WBCs, those white blood cells, to sleep. The good news is the body stops attacking itself, but the bad news here is we get bone marrow suppression with immunosuppressants, meaning we have a big risk for infections and high risk for bleeding. Now guys, please focus on those two things, the two biggest test tips I can give you, for immunosuppressants, where the immune system is suppressed. Now, the first drug is hydroxychloroquine, given to treat lupus, where the body's attacking its own skin and joints. So this drug helps to decrease inflammation and fatigue. So commonly, we'll see patients with increased energy when taking this drug. Now, it's taken for several months to reach that therapeutic level, so the benefits are not seen overnight. Now, the key point comes in the major adverse effects. Big-time retinal damage as well as vision problems. So we must teach patients for regular eye appointments. Every key number here, 6 to 12 months. Make sure to write that down. So the big memory trick we use here is hydroxychloroquine causes eye damage with that hydroxy. And just think chloroquine sounds like chlorine. So we got to check the eyes every single year for that retinal damage. Now, the HESI mentioned in their question that teaching is effective when the client states, I need to see the optometrist at least once a year. Yes, technically this is correct because we have to see him every 6 to 12 months for those regular eye appointments. Now, lastly, don't let the NCLEX trick you. There's no need for a medical alert bracelet, which is typical for seizure patients. And there's no need for osteoporosis vitamins like calcium and even vitamin D. Those were the two most commonly chosen distractors. Now, our next immunosuppressant is methotrexate. Now, this one is the drug to know for the NCLEX as well as your exit exams. Mainly given for rheumatoid arthritis, as mentioned by Kaplan. This is where the body is attacking its own joints. And psoriasis, where the body is attacking its own skin, and even certain types of cancer to slow the growth of that cancer. Now, the mechanism of action is pretty simple. It stops folic acid metabolism, which stops cellular reproduction in the fastest replicating cells. Now, the bad news, like all immunosuppressants, the fastest replicating cells in the body are in the blood and immune system, as well as pregnant clients with a growing fetus. So we end up with a very weak immune system, leading to infections, low platelet count, leading to serious bleeding, and even fetal death with our pregnant clients. So the memory trick for methotrexate, we just call it methnotrexate. No pregnant clients, no crowds or live vaccines to avoid infection, and no razors or brushing teeth hard. Huge bleed risk with those low platelets. These are the big no-nos for methnotrexate. So the big key points for your exam come in terms of infection and bleeding risk. So infection risk, the big three are we report fever over the key number 100.3 Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. And secondly, we avoid crowds and sick people. And then lastly, we avoid fresh fruits as well as flowers. Now for thrombocytopenia, that's technically platelets under 100,000. So just remember, under 50 is very risky, and under 150 is very iffy. So we monitor those platelets 
under 100,000. Some big key numbers there. So report bleeding in these various ways. So petechiae, that bleeding under the skin, purpa, or purple spots under the skin, as well as melana, that black tarry stool, could indicate a GI bleed. And even hematemesis, that vomiting of blood. And bleeding gums. So we must report these findings to the HCP immediately. Now the HESI question that was asked for methotrexate. It suppresses B and T lymphocytes. Basically meaning it suppresses white blood cells in the immune system. Now the big teaching point here is we get flu and pneumonia vaccines that are, keyword, inactivated. So flu vaccines are not contraindicated. But what is contraindicated is live vaccines like herpes zoster. So no live vaccines. So don't be tricked, guys. Now, lastly, no pregnancy because methnotrexate is not baby safe. We must teach the patient to use birth control. So one question bank said no pregnancy until one menstrual cycle after treatment is resolved. Another quiz bank said No pregnancy until three months after treatment is finished. And a third said, men, no trying for a baby until three months after treatment with methotrexate is complete. Now, don't let the NCLEX trick you here. There's no need for frequent eye checkups since it's not eye toxic. So remember the differences with the memory trick. Methotrexate, we say methnotrexate since no babies. And hydroxychloroquine is eye damage for that immunosuppressant. Now, that's how you know the differences. Next up, we have TNF, which is tumor necrosis factor inhibitors. We have the drugs etanercept, infliximab, and edibilimab. Now, these are other immunosuppressants given to autoimmune disease patients where the body's attacking itself. So the memory trick we use is etanercept intercepts the immune response, causing immunosuppression. And MAB ending is MAD immunosuppression. So abdiblimab, as well as infliximab, inflicts MAD immunosuppression. Now the key points to write down, like all immunosuppressants, the big thing is to report to the HCP elevated WBCs, as well as a fever over 100.3, or 38 degrees Celsius. That's the biggest NCLEX tip there. Fever is always priority above anything else. Since a suppressed immune system that has a fever means typically a big infection. Now for patient education, two big key points here. Tuberculosis, or TB, can be reactivated. So this can occur with a low immune system, and that was mentioned multiple times on many different quiz banks. That's why a negative TB test is needed before starting therapy. So before starting, as well as yearly follow-ups to ensure that negative TB. Now, if this TB test does come back positive, then a patient has to be treated with anti-TB drugs before starting these immunosuppressants, since it can make the TB even worse. Now, the next point is for vaccines. The yearly flu vaccine is recommended, but no live vaccines. So no herpes zoster or shingles. And we teach clients to avoid infection risk, like avoid crowds and sick people. Now, speaking of, a contraindication, you cannot take the med if you have infections. So a chronic, reoccurring, or even recent infection. For example, a client who's on an antibiotic for a current infection cannot take infliximab or any other immunosuppressant. Now, lastly, let's talk about labs here so that you don't get tricked. So, listen very closely. For labs, we report elevated WBCs. Clients with infections will normally have elevated WBCs. But a client who's immunosuppressed with an elevated WBC or a fever, guys, these are big key words. This usually indicates a severe infection, since the immune system is so suppressed. Next is elevated CRP. Most students get this wrong all the time, so listen close. 
elevated CRP is not the most important lab. So exams in the NCLEX will try and trick you here, asking for which option shows the effectiveness of immunosuppressants. So CRP, again, was the most commonly chosen distractors nearly 50% of the time. So very simply, just think about the patho here. Clients with autoimmune diseases already have a ton of inflammation in the body, since the body's attacking itself. And if CRP is elevated, it just represents all inflammation on the body, not specific to the disease. So we expect patients with autoimmune diseases to already have an elevated CRP. So the priority here is elevated WBCs and fever, which indicates a huge infection for those who are immunosuppressed. Now for the last drugs for immunosuppressants. We have cyclosporin as well as azothioprine, given to prevent organ transplant rejection. So these are lifelong drugs. Now they lower the immune response to prevent the body from attacking the new organ. So the memory trick we use for cyclosporin, just think cyclosparin, since they spare the organ from rejection. Now, it can also be given for autoimmune diseases like RA and IBD, but it's most commonly given for organ transplant patients. So the key point here is the adverse effects. Like all immunosuppressants, bone marrow suppression like low WBCs and low platelets. So we get a big risk for infection as well as bleeding. So before giving these medications, we always check WBCs and platelets. So we report the key numbers for leukopenia to the HCP. So low WBCs below 4,000. And we monitor bleeding as well as not giving to pregnant patients. So we teach to use contraception. These are the three typical for all immunosuppressants. Now, a common side effect for cyclosporin is that gingival hyperplasia, basically meaning that overgrowth of gum tissue around the teeth. Now, no, you do not need to report this since this is an expected effect. Now, for patient teaching, no grapefruit juice. Like always, the big NCLEX tip, we always avoid grapefruit juice on 99% of the drugs on the NCLEX. And we avoid crowds to avoid infection. And again, we use birth control because it's not baby safe. Now, the ATI mentioned we have to notify the provider for any signs of infection from that low immune system. And the HESI says teaching for cyclosporin and azathioprine, we avoid crowds, no live vaccines like herpes zoster as well as shingles, and we use a soft bristle toothbrush since gum bleeding is a common side effect. And then lastly, we always use contraception because it's not baby safe. Now, the last point is Kaplan mentioned patient statement that requires further teaching. So when the patient says, I will mix cyclosporin with grapefruit juice. No, we never do that. And then secondly, cyclosporin teaching for organ transplant. We take the medication for life since it's a lifelong drug. And the HCP will evaluate blood work regularly. And then lastly, you take the medication at the same time every single day. These three were the biggest key findings on all the various quiz banks. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.